Great, thanks for that. Um, I'm gonna share, it's like two slides. It's just some notes, just to kind of um, get things organized. Um, actually, you know what? I, I wanna be, I wanna be able to see people. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do, go into full screen mode. So hang on just a second. Uh, I'll share my screen. All right, make it bigger. Okay, so it's just two slides, just to kind of put a little context on this. Um, right. So every year, you know, one of the at GCC, there's a presentation from PIs to try to summarize, you know, the all, all the amazing progress that's happened in the last, uh, you know, since the last GCC. Uh, so we have, you know, an extensive back, backlog of material to go through. So I, you know, none of us are have any concerns about having enough to talk about, but we also want to be, um, uh, you know, we have about a month's time, so there's a little bit of opportunity here to, you know, kind of think about, um, you know, is there a demonstration? Is there is there some new technology that could be showed off? They'll tie together, you know, you know, major progress across all the off, across all the different working groups here. Um, so, you know, at, at uh, I guess this was what back in September or so, you know, at that um, sort of last updates of the working groups. You know, one of the topics that came up as sort of a common theme was thinking about remote data um, to, to kind of really um, uh, uh, sort of interact with all the working groups at, at many different levels, you know, from the UI to expose remote data to kind of the back end services that can actually process it and, and work with it. And what's interesting about this is there, this comes up in many different contexts uh, scientifically about why you might want to do this. So in the case of, for example, COVID, you know, there could be data sets distributed around the world for various reasons, and you want to do an aggregate analysis of all that, you know, it's going to be kind of this many to many relationship where all servers may want to be able to talk to all other servers um, to be able to see that. In the case of the vertebrate genomes project, um, you know, there, uh, uh, there's the workflows have been um, developed that can assemble genomes and do a bunch of analysis, they often have very special uh, data requirements and memory requirements, like a terabyte or more of RAM. Um, some of those nodes are, you know, are, are available in the U. Um, they're very precious to be able to get access to such uh, resources. Um, but nevertheless, we want to be able to tap into those resources from other uh, instances. So you can imagine a user logged in in Maine in, in the United States, you know, trying to uh, remotely manage uh, workflows in, in, say, in, say, the EU to get access to that. Uh, in the case of Anvil, uh, where there's sort of protected data, some of that protected data right now lives in, in Google Cloud. Some of that protected data may live in Azure or AWS. We want to have all these different um, sort of uh, data sets, um, uh, you know, kind of executed on. We, we also want to avoid uh, moving from cloud to cloud to cloud because there's egress fees associated with that. So there's sort of security considerations and then uh, also egress as well. Uh, and then uh, a very similar story in the case of ITCR, where uh, there's sort of patient uh, data that are stored across multiple clouds or multiple institutions. And we want to kind of, um, you know, do aggregate analysis. We want to have unified analysis for from one portal you can tap into all these different resources um, in a secure and a, a, a federated way, essentially. So when you think about you know what it takes um, uh, to do this, uh, you know there's obviously a lot of moving parts uh, to be able to kind of work with remote data, um, uh, uh, you know, in a really seamless way. Here's sort of a super high level skim of how this might impact the different working groups. Obviously, there's a lot of details that are, are not displayed here. Um, but as you kind of think through the working groups we hear, it hits every single one. So on the UI side, you know, we need all these user facing um, uh, components, uh, select where the data are, you know, uh, launch jobs remotely, monitor them. And I think a critical part of that will be sort of credential management, especially to make, uh, uh, sort of ingest your credentials and make sure they're propagated through um, securely uh, to these different um, remote data sets. Uh, for systems of backends, we need you know uh, APIs and implementations uh, for remote data registration, job execution, monitoring, tools and workflows uh, that you know that um, that serve these scientific use cases, uh, assuring the tools are available and accessible for remote execution. Maybe they need special packaging. Maybe they need to be sort of tagged in a special way. Uh, testing and hardening, you know, so, so that um, we can you know just very very routinely you know run these remote data tests all the time. To make sure uh, they seamlessly execute um, uh, end to end, and then goats also play a really important role to sort of develop new tutorials, new documentation, um, uh, just new trainings uh, to from the user side to how to work job remote job execution, and I'm sure also on the administrative.
administrative side, you know, how can you set up servers that can um, partic participate in, re in remote execution? And then this also touched all the sort of scientific projects that we have for, for the reasons that um, we we're talking about. So this, this is um, uh, sort of the goal is to just open the forum here. Um, I, don't, I don't know how we want to do this. We could go kind of working group by working group um, and just sort of talk through, um, you know, where things stand. Is, th is this, uh, uh, you know, we, we do have about a month or maybe a little bit more. Um, you know, but we just want kind of an honest assessment about what's what's working, what's not working, what's possible, what's not possible. Um, and especially what we're interested in is if there's like key integrations that need to happen where one working group is aware of what's going on in the other working group to make sure, you know, all the different systems can talk to each other. So um, I, I know that we're kind of putting everyone on the spot here, but we wanted just to have this a real casual um, conversation, an open discussion. But I'm very interested to hear everyone's thoughts about uh, from the different working groups. Um, you know, is this uh, dream of uh, remote data uh, analysis? You know, how far away is it? Um, that's that's sort of the goals there. So that's that's my last slide. Um, uh, I, I'm curious if there's any sort of initial thoughts or. Um, maybe if we can. Um describe a little bit sort of the flow of the demo in ideal case then then perhaps then working groups will have a better understanding of what's what's uh, where they where their chunks start and end and what's involved so um i mean so i don't i mean the one thing that strikes me here is that it's you know the work that has to be developed is a purely backend at this point, I think. Um, and like the idea of taking things from another server. I mean, you have to splash that out a little bit. You can cheat, but that sounds like a multi-year project. Um, and we'd need more resources for that. There are some simpler things we can do in demo, like um, get things from you know, file source S3 or whatever, and make sure it doesn't end up in Galaxy. Um, that's something we can definitely do for GCC. Uh, but like, yeah. So uh, I think one of the early things that we had in mind was something like, okay, I'm at usegalaxy.org. Then there is a large set of, I don't know, for example, COVID data set somewhere on sitting in EU, and I can analyze them there, but from usegalaxy.org. Is that possible? So who who's, who runs the job? Like, how's that look like? Is that EU that runs the job on, on .org's behalf? Or? That's the plan yes unless i understand this wrong and please john and and uh, bjorn might correct me here i mean in a sense that's possible if we open up each other's backend like each other's object stores um, and allow accessing them from each other. But that sounds like, I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't sound like something useful for the community, except for those two large servers. Um, okay. Maybe. And I mean, there are, there are also like legal questions, I guess, that need to be addressed. So my correct me when I'm wrong, but I think the question that we are asking is at GCC, we need to give a presentation. And this presentation should cover most of the awesome work that was done in the last year. And we were thinking especially about the remote data stuff that we know, we the new history and so on. And the question is simply, and, and we are not asking to implement anything in the next two months or whatever, one month. What we are asking is, 
um, what can we realistically demonstrate that will be deployed in the next release? Right? So how can we utilize the remote data work in a way that we can also then show the new history um, and what cool stuff is actually possible with the remote data work, maybe in combination with Pulsar. So the Australians, we know that they are now using a Pulsar endpoint in AWS where they submit the AlphaFold stuff in. But these are all super cool things that are working currently. How can we get that together and, and what, what role plays the remote data stuff in there that we can give a very nice demonstration at GCC that, that captures all of that? But we, we are, we I, mean, also... I, I, I mean, so, I mean, the, the thing that we wanted to work on and like that was the starting point for the remote data is that, uh, that like Galaxy doesn't need to ingest in its object store that it controls uh, remote data sets that are on, or on S3, for instance. So that would be possible now, right? So you can, you can say in your file source, uh, there's an S3 bucket, the user can select it and instead of uploading it into the history, uh, you get this deferred data set. So that's um, very minimal metadata on the, on the Galaxy side will appear in the history. And then once you run it, we can materialize that data set on the job worker. So there's no, I mean, Galaxy doesn't hold on to the data. Now, from a user perspective, I don't think that's exciting. And it's, it's not what I've heard now as a suggestion. So it's... Uh, no, no, we asking for a suggestion, right? That's the point. <laughs> or maybe I, I get. I, I, I get mean, why, why, I mean, like, I, I yeah. I, the notion of from the user's standpoint, it's not exciting. That's a wrong way of thinking about this because there are lots of things in Galaxy which, from a user standpoint, are not that exciting, like submitting jobs anywhere, in fact and running things on a cluster. Users don't know about this. If you ask a sort of any biologist, they, so for them, it's just, you push a button, you get results, but it's not exciting. But it's exciting for people who I think will be in GCC because it's sort of not really uh, average users who will be there. And it will be exciting for anybody who does any development or thinking of Galaxy as a platform that they can use at their place. That's the goal. So from that standpoint, it's actually very exciting. I mean, I, 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 it's important work for sure. Um, but like, you know, there's so much cool things happening with the display of workflows, with the new oh, history the and so on is, and so on. What's the coolest presentation we can put giving what we have? That's the question. I mean, that, that's what I said, right? I mean, we can, um, Run so I mean if we have a if we have something in the cloud if you have S3 uh, and we have some compute in the cloud then uh, we can run jobs there without Galaxy holding onto the data, right? Basically skipping the upload part of the whole thing. Um, so how John, does, is it cool enough for you? It's certainly cool enough for me. <laughs> I mean, John, uh, you've worked on this, right? And I'm sorry that I called it not exciting. It's totally exciting to me, but it's just. <laughs> no, I, I, I talked to the TIs yesterday and I, I had the same comments. I mean, you, you articulated the scope of the work, I think, a lot better than I did. But um, in terms of it just not being a flashy demo, I, I have the same comments. Um, you know, even if I think of the work I've done over the last year, I don't think deferred data is the most like exciting thing like if i if i had to go up on stage and, and talk about something I, I mean the tools the clicking on the tags and workflows i mean like there's gooey things there's things that you like click on and interact with and that feel more exciting um and then there's the the political there's like the pulsar network right like if i think about remote data i think you know it's it's really I mean, it's a technical question in a lot of ways, but it's also a political question. And it's a question of, um, I, so, so to my mind, uh, the sort of the stuff like the Pulsar network is more exciting, um, but, but yeah. John, I mean, uh, but John, how can we demonstrate the Pulsar network together with remote data? Is there, is there a, a cool way where I'm you can- I that's happening in June, right? I think that we need to figure out how to get the remote, the remote data stuff is cool and it doesn't quite work with Pulsar yet, right? Like it's, uh, I mean, hopefully we get there, but um, 
yeah, if, if we could do that, that would be great. And maybe that's the point of this meeting is to figure out how we get there. But um, yeah, I, I think the Pulsar network enough is is enough, I guess, is what I'm saying. But m maybe I'm wrong. I mean, there should really not, not be a shortage of exciting things to show that were developed in the last year. And, you know, in, in a sense, we could go big, back a little bit uh, longer even than that. Even. I mean, the new history, like you can do a full talk on that, I think. Uh, all the little new cool bells and whistles. But there will, there will be talks, right? I mean, there will be talks about the new history and so on. So, I mean, we, we can fall back to the usual PI talk and just give an overview without big connections. We just thought that it would be nice to have really a, a demo where we can highlight a lot of things that magically come together. Right, and the workflow um, user interface and, and the new two, uh, histories, of, of course, they are proud of that, but can we come up with a coherent story? That was more or less the question that we wanted to discuss, I guess. Right, can we include then the Pulsar network and, and, and zoom out of, I don't know, I mean, I'm not the creative here. I mean, zoom out of Galaxy and then show the Pulsar network where the job is currently scheduled. I don't know. I mean, this is exactly what, what we were asking here. I think so. We do something like okay, so we do some analysis on remote data. As Mario said, it doesn't look exciting on the uh, slide presentation, but then that demo also shows the new history. And then once this analysis runs, we actually show another thing which shows that by the way, this runs there. So that kind of so it's a it's a demo which highlights big things that we, and during the conference will be discussed separately, such as history, for example. So, I mean, one thing that we could do uh, to build on that is, um, you know, show the things that don't look really that exciting and, uh, you know, put side by side how we would have to do this previously, right? So if you say, okay, now we get, I don't know, two terabytes of BCFs or, or something like that from an S3 bucket. And we say, okay, and now we start running the job. Um, and then you have this slide and you say, okay, um, if previously we had to get that to our Galaxy instance, well, that would have taken a long time before we ran out of storage. I mean, you know, that, that's some sort of thing that you could do. And, you know, I mean, there are, there are some user interface components in John's work already I, I, that I think... where you can also track where, where things are. So I think the PI is here. I mean, Mike, me, uh, Jeremy, you know, Bjorn, we're very good at spinning things. We'll spin it, don't worry. Just, just, just sort of walk us through, and that's not a question to you, Mark. It's a question to everybody. So, what? How would you? Because usually, you know, the previous versions of this talk were like, okay, here are PIs. They sort of, you know, sit down. And this is sort of things that we think are cool. But I think that should be the other way around. That should be what you think is cool, and then we kind of make a big deal out of this, and then you go in the details. So that's we're trying to sort of reverse the way this is done. And so, so the question is, how? What's the? Uh, what? What? Uh, what? What are the important pieces here? I mean, I think you could uh, like if you really. And I'm sorry. I mean, like others should definitely chime in if they have opinions. Uh, I don't want to monopolize all the time, but I'm doing it. Uh, so three to one, <laughs> but I mean, so one thing we could do is like Delphine has developed these cool workflows for uh, BGP or Vulkan has developed the workflows for uh, SARS-CoV-2 or, you know, we could go with another workflow. We say, okay, uh, these are in the IWC, which has seen growth since last GCC. Uh, we will get them through a TRS server, which is also relatively recent work. We can, uh, I mean, if if you say this priority, we can we can improve the import interface a little bit. Like John has worked on the uh, on the workflow list, um, we can say, okay, uh, we're running this now, and the input data sets they're not actually in Galaxy; they're coming straight from S3, um, and they're not at any point in time entering Galaxy's object store. You can show this in in the data set. Um, and you know you can end with uh, Dan's new improved Jupyter notebook tool that can produce outputs. Um, I don't know. I mean, this seems like uh, it, it doesn't touch everything, uh, but I mean, I guess that's a coherent story.
John, you wanted to say something? Uh, no, I'm fine. Well, John, not to put you on the spot, but um, Asunta reminded me that you submitted an abstract to talk about remote data. Could you maybe say a few words about what you're envisioning you would present? Oh, I mean, I, I have no clue at this point. Um, that, that's a ways off. Um, <laughs> I, I think my interest around it might be more um, like a workflow centric perspective on it. Like, uh, you know, extracting artifacts maybe like RO crate, something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 is a, it is a point though that like I, I need to figure out, you know, I have 15 minutes to kill or whatever on how to come up with a demo, but you know, usually my demos aren't very flashy. So, um, you know, I would probably talk about, you know, the, the object store and the data set state and, and job components, uh, you know, architecture diagrams, uh, boring stuff, um, technical details. Uh, and then, yeah, so I'm, I'm not too worried about an overlap there, but um, yeah. Yeah, I'm not worried at all about overlap. It, it, it's um, more of a question of um, what do we think will be working uh, in, in the next release? Yeah, I, I think what Maria said is, is is the correct thing. Like you can upload data and it doesn't need to go into the object store. You can have data sets in Galaxy that, that don't actually materialize into the object store, um, which we were told is a, a huge important thing to do, right? Um, sure I is. Think, it sure is. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know that I agree, but it's, uh, you know, it, it, it is what we've managed to do. Um, and it, it was a lot of work, right? Uh, um, yeah. I mean, there are also other things that we could point out. I mean, we've worked over the years on scalability. Uh, I mean, there is, for instance, the task you work that interfaces nicely with uh, remote data stuff in that, you know, sometimes you will have to fetch data from somewhere or, you know, do things that you don't want to hold up the entire job scheduler, workflow scheduler. I mean, these are things that uh, I think you can mention, uh, even if we're not actually using them in production yet. So for instance, you know, if you want to put on a big vision, I think uh, we should probably make sure that Galaxy can handle like 10 to 100 times the volume of jobs it can handle now uh, in a given time window. And I think an important thing there is that we, we sort of make the whole scheduling stuff more efficient and that, you know, the task queues are, are one way to do that. Um, I mean, the whole, I mean, the entire API framework is different now. You can, you can even say, okay, uh, you know, for instance, like in that in that um, outline I, I mentioned, you can show some of the well-defined endpoints and say, and hey, if you're a developer, uh, we've never had as good documentation as we have now, and you can show, you know, you, you can you can say, okay, you click on the info page, and if the interface doesn't provide you what you need, you can you can look here; it's all well described. Um, I think that's that's kind of a bit of an invisible piece of work, but it, you know, I don't know if it's interesting enough for like the PI presentation, but you know, I mean, there are there are a lot of things that you know you can you can do in in passing by. Um, maybe, Mike. Maybe we need to do more practical here. So if we if we sort of so if we go back to the list of four things that was the SARS VGP. Anvil and ITCR. So in terms of if we sort of, if, so let's, if we actually do this, then what's the most, so SARS is realistic because I mean, it's easy because there is no any protection. You just, you stage some, a lot of data sets somewhere that's very straightforward. With VGP, uh, how would that look like? I mean, we can't compute. I mean, we can, we, 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 I mean, 
I mean, VGP is in that sense, it's a good example because they already use an S3 to get the raw data. Yeah. yeah so they have these ARC S3 bucket where the raw data, so the PEC bio and the Illumina data is. So this you can get in with the but, remote data, for example. But, but where would we compute then? I mean, I think, I mean, it's unfortunate that Nate's not here, but I think uh, Penn State is connected via internet too. And I don't think there's egress or ingress, so could be on .org actually. Uh, well, TAC is also an internet too. All of that is on internet too. So it's not like we're directly in the cloud, but uh, the same thing holds like when you import it from the bucket, then uh, it doesn't end up you know, in your Galaxy account for storage, it doesn't end up in the object store. So it's public data sets, by the way. I don't pay anything, and they can also be computed on EU and, and, and on the Australian server. So it's, it's really public. Um, um, my question here is that what's the remote? Uh, so in case of, for example, again, again, it's perhaps I'm asking this question because I don't understand what I'm talking about. but. So in case of, for example, COVID data, you store it somewhere and you and you compute there probably nearby, right? But in case of VGB data, you can't compute nearby. You need to move it somewhere or, 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 is, or is I'm completely, am I completely out of line here? No, you're, you're right. But you have to do that any way you do it, even on the cloud. I mean, there are maybe a few tools that can stream directly over S3, but even in the cloud, you, you know, put it in your working directory and start doing stuff. Okay, but in terms of actual presentation, so with, with COVID data, it's easy because we sort of have, it's small, it's just lots of small data sets so we can move it. In terms of VGP data, so for example, in case of COVID data, it would look like uh, there's COVID data on EU and I just run my workflows on it on EU infrastructure. That's overall, but in case of VGP, you get it from the arc to the big memory nodes and then start running, is that? How this? Okay. Um, and with Anvil or ITCR, what would be the similar scenarios? For Anvil, this is absolutely essential, right? Because Galaxy is uh, f effectively ephemeral, where each user boots up their own uh, server. So the data reside in buckets. But you know, as it is now, step one is to do this huge upload or kind of transfer task from the bucket into the Galaxy instance. But if, if we could kind of skip that huge upload and just sort of, you know, somehow ingest a list of URLs or, or you know, whatever the right mechanism is, um, that would be huge. That would be, that'll save uh, users time, a uh, huge amount of space, huge amount of everything. So it's a huge win. Uh, Jeremy, do you want to say a bit about IT here? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I think that in thinking about this over the last 48 hours or so, there's this key distinction that we should all try to make, which is there are two pieces of the puzzle that I think we're perhaps confounding sometimes. Number one is that when you upload a data set into Galaxy, when you use deferred data now, it doesn't go into the store. But as Anton was saying, the question still then becomes when you actually do the compute, can you do data local compute? And I guess I had naively assumed that they would be intertwined, but they're not right, you can still <laughs> defer that data, not put it in the Galaxy store, but also not do data local compute and still have to bring it over. Um, in the case of ITCR, it would be nice to have both, to be honest. We would not like to put it into the Galaxy data store for all the reasons Mark, Mike articulated, but also we would like to do data local compute. And it seems like the data local compute is still a ways out. Um, and maybe the, uh, unfortunately, the more easily demoable thing in some sense, if you say, look, I don't have to move these terabytes of data off the cloud. So, um, so yeah, I mean, we don't have a solution like where you can say, you know, whatever you do, it'll be data local without writing a job router or something like this. But they do, I mean, I think there are ways in which you could determine based on you know where the data is, choose you know in Galaxy terms a destination. I wrote. Uh, so that the compute is closer to the data. Um, I mean, it's it's not a streamlined thing. It's not as fancy as other systems offer. Uh, 
but overall, you know, you you can set it up, especially if you're in like a uh, yeah. Well, I I don't really know how the ATCR setup looks like, but um, you know, if you know your infrastructure, you can write a rule to match that. I think. I mean, that that's with a big question mark because I haven't done it, but just like. Overall, it seems like you can probably do this. The ITCR setup is pretty straightforward. There's terabytes, hundreds of terabytes of data on both GCP and AWS. Some of it is public, but we still don't want to move it because it's just too large. It would be nice if people could use, use galaxy.org or use galaxy.eu to analyze those data sets on the cloud. What I think, if I understand correctly, I'm hearing is the hang up right now is we don't have compute set up on either of those clouds. So deferred data would work just fine today, right? You, you boot up or well, you go to use galaxy.org, you say, I'm gonna to point to this set of hundred files. It won't be slurped down into use galaxy.org's object store, fantastic. But when you run the job, you would slurp all that down into, the worker, yeah. uh, into the worker node. And that is still pretty prohibitive. Yeah, I mean, depending on where your worker is, right? So um, if it's your responsibility to make sure that you have a worker in GCP and one in AWS, um, and then I believe we could do a little bit of magic to determine whether we want to send the job to uh, GCP or AWS. Based on the URI? Um, yeah. I Thing. I mean, at least for things that were, you know, that come straight out the upload, yes, right. I mean, after that, immediate data, intermediate data sets still go to the object store, right? I understand the intermediate data sets still go there, for instance, yeah. So <clears throat> I guess what, what I'm hearing is these, or I guess what I had envisioned is if we could analyze these big data sets that were sitting on the cloud from .org or .eu, we would be able to demonstrate all the fantastic UI advancements and the task queue and stuff like that. But right now, as it stands, we, we wouldn't argue that data local computing is part of this solution probably because it doesn't seem like we could bring that up in a reasonable period of time. We'd still be doing this trade transfer to the worker node. So it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I, I would right feel now. more comfortable with this because I guess at one point we want to do data, uh, data local compute and not, uh, you know, say, well, last year we said we can do data local compute and this year we spent a ton of time and we can do uh, data local compute, right? Yeah. One approach here is then to forget the data local compute part, focus on large scale analyses of some data sets and just walk through how the UI facilitates large scale analysis through one of these scientific drivers. If it happens to be a personal instance on GCP through Anvil, that's okay because data local compute means transfer within a cloud and, and that's fine. Um, if it happens to be on EU or .org, that's also fine as long as the data sets are small and can be moved quickly. Or we can, uh, as Mike would say, do a Julia Childs type of demo where we cut out the, the middle piece where, where it takes a long time to do that data transfer and the data analysis. I don't remember what context we talked about it in. Um, but recently, we also talked about uh, I, Dan's, was it 2017 scalability talk about basically all the things that didn't work in Galaxy at scale. We thought it would be cool to revisit that and, you know, basically try the same types of things that he did um, and just show the difference. Uh, I don't know that that's suitable for this particular talk, but we thought it would be kind of a cool thing to look at for some context. I mean, I guess it's a, it's a bit of a developer motivation thing. Right? Yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing where, you know, Nicola is processing 600,000 data sets and he says like, well, it's taking a long time. And then we can zoom in on why that is. Um, um, by large scale, Jeremy, you mean 
collections? Yeah, more or less. Uh, perhaps I'm missing something, but collections seem and the new UI seem like a large part of this demo. Of course. For instance. But how would so let's so suppose we go to well, I guess with VGP it actually works well because you have this file browser now. But for example, if you how would you as a user access uh, I, I'm to be honest with you, I'm so tired of COVID, but so some set of sequences, okay, it will be COVID probably, but so some set of sequences at EU from .org, how would interface look like? Is that gonna be a library or is it gonna be the same file browser? I, I think that, that's the, the, go ahead, Marius, I'm sorry. I think that's the part that I don't think is realistic. Uh, unless, you know, we sync this manually in the backend, uh, but you know, the accessing data from one server and another, with a user interface and not with a bunch of cheating involved. Okay, so that's what we want to know. That's basically, so then that would guide us to actual demo. So that's not possible, okay. Uh, I didn't say it's not possible. <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea to present it. I mean, if I had like a, a budget and, uh, and I wanted to, do a cool demo. I was thinking about something Mario said, and it would be kind of cool if you could have side to side um, loading, let's say, 2000 COVID sequences into a history, um, you know, one with without deferred data and one with deferred data. And presumably, without deferred data, the whole demo is just sitting there. Um, and with deferred data, you can go in and you can start showing off history features, you could start, you know, running analysis as needed on them. Um, that would be a really cool demo. Uh, I, I mean, it, it would be flashy at least um, to sort of see just one side spinning and, and on one side you're you're getting going faster and it sort of, it skirts That's... around the issues. Um, and Anton, I, I sent you for, some, for instance, a, a GIF um, with upload, right? I mean, I uploaded a hundred data sets in uh, using the message queue very very small data sets but like uh you know the 100 data sets they just turned green i mean there was no intermediate thing going on like if if you did that side by side without the message queue i mean that would take like a minute or so yep i guess that falls in the similar category yeah and that minute becomes an hour or several hours if it's large data right that's undeferred yeah okay But where do I start? So how do you start that? What, so suppose you're doing this demo, how, what, what's, the, what's the starting point? I think the starting point has to be that you have a public. Jeremy, go on. I think the starting point has to be that you have a public data set out there in the world, Anton, that is very large. Okay, that's easy. And has lot, but I mean, your question is really interesting. I don't want to derail us, but the you're talking about federations, so to speak, when you ask about .org and .eu talking together. And federation is a really interesting concept. I don't think we've really pushed on it much, but from a user experience standpoint, th this may have some legs down the road where you could potentially use it, a single sign-in to access data across EU and .org. I just don't think it's possible for GCC. So I guess that's the distinction is we, the, the two servers can't talk to each other. What we want is a server that talks to a large data set that's out there in the world. I Public. think I frame it wrong. I think really what I meant is that we don't really have to talk to you, but I'm having data stored at Denby infrastructure in Germany, same infrastructure that uh, EU is using. Yeah, I, I think I, that's, that was the original uh, plan. Not, not the instance, but but it's just, the, I, I have org, but the data is in German or somewhere else, not in the US. I mean, it can be in US, but it's flashier to, to be somewhere else. Yeah, this goes back to data local computing, this idea that we've got the piece in place to say, oh, I know that there's data out there that I wanna work with and mm -hmm. I can now 
talk about it and operate it on it in Galaxy. But when I do that operation, I still got to localize that data or copy it over. I can't run the job way over in Germany right now because we don't have the compute set up. I mean, that would be really cool. I mean, yeah. this, this, it, it, I mean, it's some sort of collaborative scheduling over shared infrastructure. Um, can you can you use Pulsar for that right now? Just set it, so if you have a Pulsar instance running in AWS somewhere, can you connect to it from a local Galaxy on a laptop? Because that would be a cool demo to show if you have data in AWS, a Pulsar node running in AWS, and you're on conference Wi-Fi, but it actually works, right? I mean that that has worked for some time now, right? I mean. With the deferred data and well, no, <laughs> right. So that's okay. 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 That's all I've got. <laughs> okay. So exp explain again as a, for an idiot. So you just go ahead. So you have a laptop. Okay. Yeah. You've got a laptop with a local galaxy that you just set up. You connected, you have some Pulsar node running on AWS. Mm -hmm. You're able to dispatch jobs to that Pulsar node, use deferred data to get data out of S3. So it's local to AWS, local to your Pulsar node, but you actually run the jobs from your laptop and then you see some results at the end, right? But isn't there, as what John was saying, that there is a problem between sort of deferred data and Pulsar? Or not? Yeah, that's not, that, that piece isn't quite there. I'm, okay. Can we put a salary worker on Amazon? <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I almost wonder. If, that's not. I don't know if that's Galaxy on your laptop at that point. But. John, I mean, yeah. we talked about this, but the, if we push the remote tool email to Pulsar, and the tests are working, right? We we have this tested with Pulsar. The remote tool email should do the materialization of the data set. So what piece is missing there? Uh, you know, I could be wrong. I just, it feels like that happened. I mean, wait, you've tried that with Pulsar and it works? Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I could, then I'm, then I'm perhaps wrong. I, that needs all of Galaxy available to it. All right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So Pulsar needs to have a copy of uh, Galaxy available. That's right. It needs to be importable, but that might be true for some Pulsar setups, right? Yeah, no, and certainly the, the way main runs, it, it, it does have that available. Um, I, I had not realized that you had tests and had done this. Um, to me, it looked like this was magic happening in the handler that didn't work with the Pulsar runner. But uh, if, you, if you've done it, then, that's, then it should just work with deferred data, right? Like it's happening in the remote evaluation. Um, you know, we, we haven't sat down and like looked at it, but we, we have tests. Unit tests. Yeah, I mean, we, we have tests, but sometimes <laughs> they're working yeah. so well, they're just using some other thing that uh, that made it magically pass. But um, right. Met we, metadata can, we can check metadata. this more carefully. Yeah. OK, maybe that maybe that laptop demo would work just fine then. Um, that would be amazing. I, I didn't know it worked so well. That's awesome. So it would it would be nice to continue to hack on it to the point where if you did a pip install of Pulsar, you didn't need Galaxy in order to get it to work. And if we did a the two pod Kubernetes version of this, so it works with Kubernetes. And blah blah blah. I mean, but the Galaxy app itself should be pip installable. So with some luck, that might work out. It's just I guess like a, a normal Pulsar install should probably not bring in the Galaxy app package, but as like an extra. Could work. That would be cool. But that's speculation. Like, I mean, no guarantees that's going to work by GCC. <laughs> we, we should check it. It might. But... Um, again, in no way this whole thing is to create any additional work. It's just we're trying to understand which pieces we can put together in um, sort of that's, that's the, uh, I guess it reflects PI's ignorance. So. 
you know. Here's an idea, possibly non-technical, just flashy related with regard to what uh, Mario said a, a few minutes ago about side by side, the slow versus fast, the same thing. So when it, it, it can be, uh, Marius, correct me if I'm wrong, it can be easily 20 times faster, right? With the message queue. Uh, the upload, yeah. So uh, one second versus 20 seconds is absolutely not impressive to an audience. But one minute versus 20 minutes is very impressive if you start describing it and launch it and you are done with describing it within one minute and it's done on this side and the other one will be done precisely by the end of the presentation if it's timed just right. That might be a little bit more impressive. Maybe not. No, actually 20 seconds is also very impressive for a user, trust me. I mean, this is, uh, I think that would be quite possible because, um, well, I haven't personally played with Jones branch, but I think there's a, there's a checkbox when you upload stuff, whether you want to defer it or not, right? So you can say, okay, let's start this. And we say, oops, I uh, didn't click deferred data. And then uh, is, that, is that how it could work, John? Uh, yeah, there is a checkbox. Um, yeah, that would be cool. Um, it's noticeable if it if it ends uh, twenty minutes later once we're done with the presentation. Um, so going back to the laptop abstraction, so you have a laptop with a galaxy running on it. It talks to a pre-configured uh, pulsar instance somewhere that is also has access to the data local to that pulsar. Right. Okay, and um, so in that setup, where is the where where can we show the difference between uh, between the between the queues? One second. I mean, one second. You would just see this in your history, right? One data set will be yeah. done and the other will be running. Yes. So, and, and, and yeah. I mean, in this analogy, we could actually have two separate laptops, <laughs> have them race yeah. against each other. Laptop race, yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll have to have two projectors, though. That complicate our GCZ preparation <laughs> significantly. <laughs> Who, who suggested that? Was, was that because we haven't uh, modernized the multi-history view? <laughs> no, this is exciting. This has been a great conversation to, to brainstorm what's possible. And I think a lot of great ideas came, are coming out of this conversation. Um, if I could just like real quick, I, I mean, maybe back to Jeremy's point and maybe even some of Marius's skepticism. To me, the lo data local compute has been possible for five years in Galaxy. I, I, I would like a, at some point, like a, a checklist or something of like, you know, we have these pieces that allow a, an admin to deploy a solution that is, takes advantage of data local compute, right? Um, and that is true with or without deferred data. Um, so I'm sort of, uh, I don't know. I, it would be nice to, to know what it would take to change the minds of the people in this room uh, that Galaxy can do data local compute um, and, and what, 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 what we feel other services have that we don't. I mean, some of them are kind of obvious but I mean, I, I think in terms of allowing you to flexibly deploy things, I think we actually do better than everybody else um, on this um, narrow point, um, not worse. Um, yeah, and so that was just like a, just a comment, just like a, a an end point, an end cap I wanted to add onto that, that comment because um, that, that was a little concerning to me, but all right, sorry. I mean, I, I can give like a quick answer, which would be that, I mean, you, you need to write a custom rule in Python, right? So for other systems that would be perfectly fine, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not even that our interface is well-defined in a sense. So like the people that could set this up 
are Galaxy developers, whether or not they are admins primarily, but they do have intimate knowledge of how Galaxy works if you want to set up the rule, right? So we, we set up, for instance, the uh, per, I mean, I per group. I think you could do this without a custom rule. Uh, but yeah, I, I should shut up though. Yeah, that's that's fair. I will I will try I to mean, rectify that. Okay, so what I'm thinking about when I said data local compute is that you have multiple uh, data locations and multiple compute locations, and you want to match. You know, this data set is here, so compute should go there. Uh, I don't know if that's the same scenario we're talking about. Yeah, no, that that is, and I, I guess I, I would assume there's some way in any of the YAML description languages that we've implemented on top of Galaxy's job config to do that, but maybe there isn't. Maybe that's a whole I should try to figure out. But um, I mean, I ultimately don't think the five lines of Python are, I, I mean, that's exactly how you would want to do that, right? That's the most flexible thing you could do. Um, it's going to be better than, you know, because there's a million different little edge cases here. Um, and you should have full control of that, but maybe I'm wrong. Now, it's thanks, a good point. Yeah, I, I would agree. And I apologize, John, we, we aren't giving due credit here to what's out there. I, I do concur with Marius that it feels a little hard right now to do data local computing, but I definitely see a path with all these different pieces now that we could do it. It does di require a dynamic job, job destination specifier apologies for mangling that particular piece. Um, and it requires setting up the remote compute. Um, so, for instance, if we set up this remote pulsar in AWS or GCP or something like that, that would be a requirement too. And then connecting the two and doing the configuration. But you're right; there is a path to data local compute. Um, I think if we cleaned it up just a little bit and documented it, we'd make a lot of progress there. Yeah, I, I mean, I think this might, to a large extent, be that we just somebody needs to walk it through um, and describe, you know, what is possible now, and then. From that, it should also pretty clearly follow what would be the improvement that we can make. Yeah, yeah and, these, and I these are you. I'll ask. I'm sorry. I'll ask some one of my software engineers to start looking at this more closely, John. It's also worth looking at Nuan's work on spinning up jobs on clusters. You know, like the 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 pulsar configuration piece is a thing there, but. I know that Nuan has done a lot of work on that to, to make that automated. So, yeah. Yep. yeah. No, uh, thanks for the clarification. And sorry if I came off as, I, I just wanted to like understand where people's heads were at so that we can go forward and sort of get on the same page. And we'll never be completely on the same page, but understanding what needs to be done and your know, documentation is a great point. Obviously there's a lack of that. Um, all right, awesome. John, you didn't even say that you hate Galaxy today, so I think we're improving. Yeah, and we are past the hour mark, so it's too late. Grr. I mean, the Bjorn asked a, a good question, like, can we schedule workflows in a way that intermediate steps are not transferred? And I think the current answer is no. Uh, but I mean, it's a cool task, right? It's something yeah, we should work towards too. With extended metadata, you kind of can, right? Like, by it means it depends on what you mean by transferred, right? But one I'm, thing with the different data branches, exporting invocations, right? So uh, basically, everything is in the invocations branch to be able to sort of spin up a galaxy and run a whole workflow on a remote cloud and just pull back the metadata that you want as the result. Uh, this is work that Kyle had wanted to do forever ago, and it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's in good shape if we wanted to have a really good demo for that um, in 2023. Spinning up a galaxy means using a pulsar or? No, I was thinking before the workflow, I was thinking a whole galaxy. You just run a whole galaxy instance. Um, you know, without a UI, just the API, just sort of send the workflow invocation request, run it, 
schedule it however you want, however the galaxy is configured to run it on the cloud, and just pull down the model store at the end that describes the invocation. Do you think that would actually be a route for people to bring their own compute and storage? So if you know you do this on the public Galaxy instance and you say, okay, these are the inputs, we will generate URIs for the inputs. And then you say, here's my URL for a Galaxy instance that I have whatever configured or I bought from some provider or whatever. And then you just get that back in the instance. I mean, I don't, I, in this particular case, I don't know because you, you generally don't want the intermediate workflow results, right? Like, I, I don't know if this is that problem. In my head, they're not, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's something I'm wrong. Um, okay, I think we are past an hour. I don't want to keep anyone longer, but um, for me, it was very useful, but also kind of mind blowing. Okay, I'm I'm still confused about new things. So, <laughs> okay. So uh, sorry, I'm just curious. So, what's the next thing? Next thing is probably we should come up with some kind of um, example, and then uh, and then ask if if that. So, and then through a few iterations of that, we'll actually come up with a plan. Yeah, I think we should spend one dinner in Montpellier to, to sketch that more out, the initial ideas here, um, and then come back with a more concrete plan. And John will, guess, will be Zooming you. <laughs> okay. Marius will be there. Marius is clearly the better head for all this than me anyway, so it's, it's fine. Oh, no, I mean, I, I can just transmit what you've done. <laughs> That's all. I'll just eat a baguette in your honor and... Um, <laughs> And hash brown. The hash brown. Bye bye, everyone. Have a nice week. Bye bye. Good talking bye -bye. with everyone. Bye. 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 bye.